This is also about Racine. In 1972, I had dropped out of college, went to Mexico for four months, came back to Racine, flat broke. And I wanted to work, get a couple thousand dollars and go to Europe. And I heard that this one factory was hiring, Young Radiator. So I went down the personnel office, and I had seen this place a million times. It was one of these places, a factory that was like perfectly preserved from the Middle Ages. Soot, blackened walls, hydraulic hissing, acid leaking through the wood floors, dirt, sulfur coming up in the air, and there were all these guys leaning out the window, yelling at women two blocks away, I love you, baby, marry me, meet me at the bar at midnight. And I thought, Jesus, if I work here 10 years, I'm going to be just like these lunatics. <laughs> so I walked into the personnel office, filled out the application, and the guy says, uh, all right, we need some summer help here. Uh, you got a job under one condition. I said, oh, yeah, what's that? You got to get a haircut by tomorrow. I said, a haircut? What are you talking about? My hair is just covering my ears. You know, there's guys in the factory with hair down the middle of the back. What about those guys? Yeah, they're union guys. You work 60 working days, 12 weeks. You do what you want. Until then, you do it our way or forget the job. Now, my hair wasn't that long. I thought, that's a ridiculous rule. We're in the middle of Vietnam and stuff. I'm not going to follow this. So I went out to Woolworths, and I looked for a beetle wig. And I got a beetle wig, but it was a beetle wig from, like, 1967, the White Album. It was too long. So the woman said, oh, no, no. You want a clean-cut wig? You need a Sonny Bono wig. So I got myself a Sonny Bono wig for a 1098, <laughs> put it on my head, <laughs> Walk back in the factory. My brother dropped me off. He was laughing. He said, this is never going to work. I walked in the personnel office. The guy looks at me. He says, nice haircut. Looking sharp now. <laughs> so he didn't know. He goes and introduces me to my foreman. It's a guy named Rudy, Rudy Mano. We called him Big Whistle Rudy because this guy was always umping our basketball games, and he was an umpire. And he used to always have this flamboyant way of blowing his whistles. So Big Whistle Rudy takes a look at me. He says, Dark, one of Frank's boys? That's what I thought. Uh-huh, yeah. I used to play ball with your dad. All the time, all his brothers. Good, good ball players, every one of them. Oh, yeah. He says, did you used to be a ball player at St. Catharines? I said, yeah. That's what I thought, so. He says, he's still looking pretty clean cut. Not like all these riffraff bums in the factory with all that hair and the beards and everything. I don't know what the hell's gone wrong with all you guys in Racine. Jesus, the whole goddamn country's gone to hell. Am I wrong or am I right? You, you could be right, Rudy. You're goddamn right I could be right. So Rudy gave me this job. I'm, gonna, I'm supposed to take all of these supplies and give them to the, the people who are doing the machines. And I'm just going to take these things and push them around on my cart. So all day long, I would just listen to Big Whistle Rudy talking about the glory days of baseball and bitching about the long hairs in the factory. And I would just push my cart and nod my wig head. Just push the cart, <laughs> nod my wig. I go down on the Root River with the other guys, the welders and stuff, the stoners, and we sit down there, eat our lunch, watch the carp jump, and I'd take the wig off, and then I'd, I'd put it on a stick, and sometimes we'd sing Beatles songs, <laughs> we'd wave it in the air. <laughs> and after about a month, my hair started getting long. It was sticking out from the wig. And I walked in one day, and I hadn't tucked it up well. And one of the welders said, hey, 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 tuck in your hair, Ringo. <laughs> so after that, they all started calling me Ringo. So I kept working. All of the, the guys in the factory knew, but none of the management, none of the foremen. You know, I guess in a factory, a man doesn't want to look at another man too closely. So they had a two-week shutdown in the summer, and they asked me if I'd like to do it. There'd be some painting and cleanup, and I said, yes. I wanted to work as many hours as I could, as fast as I could, so I could get out of there. So I, I painted, and after this, there was white paint all over this wig. And it was covered with paint and grease and dirt. It was like this surreal hard hat of hair designed by Salvador Dali. <laughs> but still, even with the white all over it, they didn't know it was a wig. <laughs> <laughs> so I worked. And one day... This guy comes up from the front office and he says, well, Jeff, uh, we've really appreciated your work. You've been working good here. And, uh, you know, we said that uh, kind of a summer job here and uh, you only have 50 days, so you're not in the union 
yet so we're going to have to lay you off, Jeff. And I said, no, hey, man, look, I've been counting. This is my 60th day today. He said, no, no, we got your hire date, and then there was a two-week shutdown. I said, I worked the two-week shutdown, so I have 10 extra days. He was confused. He went down and checked it out. I had skipped one half day, and at the end of that day, I would have 59.5 days exactly. He comes up and he says, 59 and a half ain't 60, you're laid off. So I went to the union steward, this Harley riding guy with long hair and everything, and, and I told him the story. He says, that's bullshit, Ringo. We're going to the wall for you. <laughs> so he went and fought all day long with the management. And at the end of the day, he walks up to me. He says, we beat their ass, Ringo. Welcome to the union, man. <laughs> Next day, I walked in with my hair down to my shoulders. And Big Whistle Rudy looks at me and says, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? Where'd you get all that hair? And I pulled the wig out of my lunchbox. <laughs> he says, oh, God, that's wrong. Oh, no, that's terrible. What did your dad say? You got to be brokenhearted. My God, I thought you were different. I didn't think you were like all those rug rats and those bums in the factory. What's wrong with you? What the hell's gone wrong? I said, Rudy, what's gone wrong? Where have you been, man? You know, things got a little crazy outside of Racine. There's Vietnam War. There's, there's acid. There's, there's, there's music. There's Hendrix and stuff, man. Things got a little crazy. Don't you understand? I mean, and, and you know those guys you're always bitching about, those guys in the long hair in the factory? Some of those guys are in Vietnam, you know? Some of those guys saw their friends get blown up. You think they give a goddamn about cutting their hair or something? They don't care about that stuff. It's just different. Now, all my friends would rather go see Led Zeppelin or the, or the Stones or something than go see a baseball game like you think. It's just a different time, Rudy. And Big Whistle Rudy just said, no, wait a minute. I, I, I don't mean to say anything about our boys, our veterans. I could be wrong about that, okay? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I misjudged that situation, okay? I'm sorry if I did. But you, you're wrong about baseball. You are wrong about baseball. Baseball's going to outlast Red Zeppelin and all that crap that you think is so great. I'm telling you right now, why do you think President Franklin Delano Roosevelt said in the middle of World War II with all the shortages, baseball's got to continue? Huh? Why? Because baseball's important. Baseball people's, lifts people's souls up. It's going to outlast Red Zeppelin and all that crap. You'll see, baseball's bigger. bigger than this song, I'm telling you right now. 